Okay, just a quick uh, update today, and we're going to talk a little bit about coolant. Um, I finished some of the projects that I had going on in my last video, uh, one of them being the LED light. Uh, I don't know if you looked at my other videos, this is a little, little dark area. The machine's not even on right now. I've just got the light on. Uh, it makes checking everything out a lot easier. Uh, and it's really bright. Uh, if you're interested in one of these lights, uh, you can pick up one on Amazon. Uh, the make is a Hyper Icon light. Uh, and the, I can't say, I mean, it comes with a great mounting bracket. It has metrics, he, metric uh, hex bolts uh, that actually do the angle. Uh, I ran the machine already quite a bit with it in it, and uh, I really like it. It doesn't really vibrate around the mounts, really secure. Um, and believe it or not, uh, there's actually uh, holes up in the side of this Excel uh, happen to have two bolts that match the slotted pattern that was on the lot. So it, it pretty much bolted right in. And I've still got the, uh, the, the old incandescent light in here as well. And it, it's basically firing right where the spindle gets close to the table. Um, one thing I wanted to uh, kind of talk about is um, I got a lot of, of messages about coolant. Um, the coolant I'm using uh, is basically just standard soluble coolant. Just pick up some wherever you can pick up some. Um, the way that I'm keeping my coolant clean on my particular machine, uh, I have two coolant trays. Uh, and I'm going to go to that here in just a second. Uh, those two coolant trays have screws that basically you can level. Basically, the, the coolant tray, trays roll, and there's one per side of the machine. There's a hose that connects them together. They roll, and basically when you set up the machine, there's some hex screws, uh, basically big set screws. It basically lifts the table up, or the coolant table up, and you want to get that level. Uh, on my machine, it's really easy. Uh, you can look on the side, and it has a little uh, uh, height, height indicator with a line on it, and it's really easy to look at that, and it's basically a level. Um, and that's what I use. When you lock those down and you lift those trays up, they won't roll anymore. They don't move. On top of that coolant tray, there's a chip tray, and I've got two of those as well. Uh, and I'll pull those out here in a second, but. What I've gotten a real big habit of doing, I don't know why on this particular machine. Um, I'm assuming they did it for a reason. My coolant, our chip trays are actually shaped at a slope and then on the back they flatten out. Um, and that flat section doesn't have any cross drills through it to let the coolant out. Uh, so what I've gotten a habit of doing is every time I use the machine, generally I'm cleaning out the chips uh, every time I use it. That way I can just keep up with it. I don't let, really let them pile up. Um, and what I'll do is I'll actually grab the coolant tray. They move really easily. Uh, I actually just rock the coolant tray just once or twice and, and slush that coolant up into those perforations and let that drain out. At least enough of it to, to where I don't have any standing coolant in the uh, chip tray. Uh, but I've had real good luck with it. I'm gonna go around, I've let the, uh, I have it cleaned up. Yesterday when I uh, came in, uh, I had quite a bit of, uh, tramp oil in there and I actually left that in there just to show you how much tramp oil actually gets collected after about two days uh, just to show what the what the uh, little box is doing. Um, I've had a couple of new tools. Uh, I actually ended up getting a uh, carbide uh, spot facing index tool. Uh, I really like that. Uh, that seems to be really working well for one tool for a lot of operations. Um, now, I've still got the boss off the machine right now. I've got a, a fixture plate. Um, this is a uh, failed piece, and this is why I'm making a fixture plate. But basically, uh, I'm making a, a custom tool. Basically, it's a narrow, thin base socket. And uh, this actually, I was unable to hold this down in the vise. Uh, this moved around. Uh, the cutting was a little too aggressive. And I'm gonna make. I've been making a fixture plate for this. Um, I don't know that I'll shoot a video on this because this is this is a pretty simple operation. It's basically just a a, uh, a hex pattern, and it'll have a three eighths on the back, and it'll be about that thick. So you can see it's going to be really really narrow. Um, it's actually for a uh, plastic filter uh, to take one off. Uh, but that's what I'll be making a fixture plate on. So I've got the vise off right now. Uh, I'm gonna make that plate. 
Uh, and basically what, what I use for, for these uh, is basically take and, and, and cut out a fixture that has a couple of uh, Mighty Bite clamps that actually clip on here. Uh, and that, that seems to work really well. Um, on this particular one, I had a set of uh, jaws cut for this material. Uh, I got in a new shipment of material. It's slightly different diameter. And I really didn't want to uh, either cut those jaws or um, do anything else other than I did attempt to do it in a vise in a, in a uh, V-block, uh, which didn't work. Uh, mainly because it's it's really aggressive cut and you just don't have a lot to hold on to here. Um, but anyway, that's where, that's where I'm at as far as projects go. Um, I'm going to take you around the machine now and kind of show... Uh, you know what to look for in your coolant because uh, that's the main thing I wanted to do in this video is just kind of give you hints on how uh, how to keep your coolant clean and keep it up you know big things are don't uh, don't let anything go down in that coolant that uh, doesn't have to go down in there and that includes any kind of solvents um, basically anything and you know try to it's, it's basically what the way I treat it is you know like you would any other sink bathroom etc you want to try to keep it as clean as possible. You don't want things growing in that coolant. And the best way to keep them from growing in the coolant is to take care of it and don't let a lot of contaminants get in it. Um, I have done uh, several loads of water uh, with the new reverse uh, osmosis uh, filtration system. Uh, that seems to be working really well. Um, I noticed that the coolant actually mixes a lot easier uh, in the pure water. Uh, than it does in, in normal tap water. Uh, some manufacturers recommend you know, only using pure water. Some say use tap water for the first load. Um, I personally, uh, my coolant says to use tap water on the first load, and that's what I do. I follow their, their instructions, and so far that's worked out really well for me. Okay, I'll take you around the machine now, and we'll kind of take a look um, at what I have got done. And mainly that's uh, some additions to the coolant system, the RO system, and kind of an update on the LED uh, to show you kind of what it actually looks like. I'll actually show you in the machine. Okay, just to kind of show you here, uh, this is how my coolant trays are arranged. There's a pipe in the center, two trays, and basically you pull on this to get the chip tray out. And it moves really easy. This is on ball bearings, uh, and it comes out really easy. Uh, and the coolant uh, container is directly below it. At, right now it's screwed down. If you look, there's little uh, hex set screws. Those are screwed down and it, it keeps the tank level. Um, this is kind of a shot. I've done this shot before and it's been a little dark. Uh, now with, that, uh, with the LED up in the top corner, it's really, really bright. And it, it pretty much covers the whole machine. I'll probably get a smaller uh, version to actually sit back in this corner back here uh, maybe in that upper corner to basically go back so I can actually look and see I can see pretty well now but um, this, I want to be able to tell what tool is getting ready to be pushed out while I'm watching uh, the program on this particular machine if you're in 100% rapid really the only slow operation um, and you're not going to stop it from changing the tool because once it initiates a tool change it's going to finish but you can stop it from actually doing the rapid if you pay attention and watch that tool come out um, and get switched over. Uh, if you don't notice what tool's in there until after this tool changer lets go, it's already too late. The, the, head, the spindle's going to drop and more than likely you're going to have a problem. Uh, so I'll probably get a little bit of light back there. Okay, here's the rear of the uh, coolant tank. And basically this is about two days uh, running. And I usually clean this out every day. I, left, I let it run an extra day just to kind of give a better visual indication about how much thing this is actually catching and basically I've just got a plastic tub and a small uh, aquarium or fountain pump uh, I got this on Amazon it's a Titan 120 gallon per hour pump I think um, and it's, it's submersed uh, they're really nice the way that I actually did it is I took the tub and you want that hole all the way at the bottom and the Titan pumps basically have the inlet on the bottom and a, a uh, a half inch hole that you need to drill in the plastic 
and pretty much that's just a press fit and it worked out really well didn't really have to make anything basically I just drilled a hole cut some slots on the uh, side of the uh, you only want to cut them on one side and basically what's happening is it's drawing in the surface into this bend and it can't escape um, because it's basically pushing out uh, coolant at a lower level than what is coming in on the top uh, I have a little foot piece of steel here sitting on top of it just to make sure that it doesn't actually if it gets clogged up it'll actually pump the, the coolant out and it'll want to float so that's to prevent that from happening um, I've been really happy with this this is working really good I don't know if you can see the coolant load but you know it's pretty close to new looking still um, and this this just runs all the time uh, occasionally I'll have to go through the coolant tank and maybe put down an absorbent mat to catch areas that are not making it back here but in general this actually cover it, it's a hitting both tanks the only issue that I have is if you wait several days um, that other tank over there there won't be enough flow so um, if I know that I'm going to have the machine down for a while I at least try to come down and cut the pump on uh, just to get a little circulation going so this this can work so that's kind of an update uh, and hopefully I gave everybody some pointers on uh, maintaining coolant again you know it's it's pretty simple Keep the system clean. Uh, you always want to check your coolant concentration. Uh, these are really cheap on eBay or Amazon. Uh, this is a refractometer. And these are really easy to use. Basically, you calibrate them against your, your clear water and uh, make sure it's calibrated. And then just put a couple of drops. Basically, what you want is uh, you want the liquid to be on that lens good enough to where when this comes down it presses the water out across the whole surface and that'll, that'll indicate what your coolant concentration is uh, another thing that I'll mention and I haven't experienced with this machine yet uh, but on a machine that's got some really old coolant or not well taken care of coolant uh, your, your regular old test strips with water hardness and pH pretty much will tell you what's going on with the coolant you start, you start plummeting pH um, then you've got an issue. Uh, usually that's you know bacteria growth or what have you, uh, lowering the pH of the water, and it'll happen really rapidly. Um, a lot of people are really surprised about how fast bacteria can take over a tank. Uh, I don't remember what the split ratios for the various, various bacteria are, but we're talking about doubling in size in a matter of some bacteria can do it within 30 minutes. So if you can imagine what's going on in that tank, uh, once it gets a hold of it, um, it's reproducing and, and basically getting all in the coolant really, really fast, uh, and it's about impossible to get it out. Um, I've, I've actually had to uh, uh, treat two machines, uh, and basically what you want to do is you buy the coolant cleaner from the manufacturer that you're using, and typically, typically um, that's going to be some type of coolant wash that you basically tear the machine down you clean up everything I highly recommend taking out the coolant tanks and actually you know completely washing them uh, maybe even pressure washing them especially if you had welded seams uh, that are overlapping you want to get everything in and out of that um, I, I have on those coolant tanks kind of brushed them down with some uh, uh, diluted bleach and let the coolant tank actually dry out in the sun after rinsing that off uh, just to make sure that I've killed anything that's in the tank. You know, the cleaner you can get it and the more sterile you can get in the environment, the longer your next load of coolant's going to last. Uh, that cleaner typically, they want you to run the machine, you basically load uh, a short batch in the machine and run it for, I don't know, I think my manufacturer recommends 45 minutes or something like that. Um, and you don't want to leave that in the machine. Some, I think trim, uh, well, I did look at Trim's uh, cleaner. I think they do have some that actually can run inside of coolant uh, and you can actually leave it in the machine for a while. They want you to run it for like a week or something like that before you take it back out. I've never used that personally. I've always used the top that you basically load the machine with it, uh, clean out everything, um, <clears throat> and then unload it. Uh, you'll actually mix a low concentration coolant, a uh, small amount, run that in the machine after the cleaner to kind of flush the cleaner out or dilute it then then actually change that again so it's a long process um, you know if you're if you're doing it uh, me I run a home shop I have a day job I'm doing this on the weekends and evenings uh, for me uh, that would probably be a whole week that would be a whole week down 
uh, just doing going through the steps um, and like I say you have to be meticulous because if you miss something uh, you're just going to end up with uh, a big load of bacteria in your coolant to start with when you when you when you load the new coolant the cleaner the better um, I always take off all of the coolant lines that I can and flush those on machines that I've actually fully cleaned uh, I actually you know I'll go down through and clean the, the valves this vinyl hose uh, is really inexpensive um, I, I've always replaced that on any machine that's just uh, you know got the uh, that thick of uh, skin on top of the coolant and smells like rotten eggs uh, kind of clean up that's when you're replacing everything and you know flushing out the coolant but that hose is relatively easy to replace uh, I've looked at it on this machine this machine when I got it um, was dry uh, so basically I just pressure washed everything uh, I did actually connect up lines and run hoses to the outside of the machine and run a lot grade uh, bleach through the pump system and you don't want that bleach to get in any of your machine you want it to basically stay inside of these coolant lines uh, so basically that was a small tub five gallon tub of bleach uh, solution and water and we're talking you know five gallons and just a couple of little capfuls of bleach in that five gallon tub and I run that five gallons through this system and out into another five gallon tub. Not really, you, you know, not in the machine, not in the coolant tanks, that kind of thing. Um, so hopefully that helps somebody out. I hope you liked the videos. Um, should be getting to, uh, I have a, one little project that I want to do for my razor. Actually, two projects I want to do for the razor. One is uh, a better mount for my VHF UHF antenna. Um, I have a really strange angle coming out of the back on the roll bar, and I'd really like to get the antenna there. Um, if I have time, I want to do a breakaway one, the one that will actually snap down, uh, or either manually or automatic with a spring, um, so that I can fit the razor up in the toy hauler. Uh, another project that I've got to get done is I'm going to go to a closed system uh, winching, and I'll probably machine something for the front of that winch. Uh, synthetic cable that'll actually connect on it and have a hole in it for a shackle hope you like the videos thanks for watching